the costs of not releasing the returns are clear. Therefore, he must have calculated that there are higher costs in releasing. And he's going to, there's obviously something there, because if there was nothing there, he would say, have at it. Should he return, release the tax returns? I would. I was asked today that question, uh, do you think that Governor Romney should release his tax returns? And I said, I do. Now, if he had cheated on his taxes, the IRS would have gone after him, right? So that's not it. He's hiding something else. He's got all these secret bank accounts in Switzerland and the Cayman Islands. We're going to get to poking around and all that, but let's start with this simple point. Romney doesn't want you to know anything about him, as little as possible. But I want to suggest at the start that we can always judge such a person by the company he keeps. With Romney, we have to judge him in this way. There's no other way to know him. Bush is, and always has been, a huge supporter of Romney, and vice versa. They have a close and rather mysterious relationship. For example, the most important speech of Romney's career was one explaining why being a Mormon should not disqualify him from being president. Romney chose to make the speech at the Bush Presidential Library in College Station, Texas, 150 miles in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Why, of all places, did Romney choose the Bush Library? Why not the Reagan Library? Why not give the speech to a large convention of Baptist preachers in a large city like Houston? That's exactly what John Kennedy did when he made a similar speech about being Catholic. But Romney felt mysteriously compelled to kiss the ring of this criminal CIA godfather. What gives? The point is, we have to judge him by the company that he keeps, and he keeps very bad company. Romney says he wants a vice president just like Dick Cheney. Last weekend I was watching C-SPAN and I saw Vice President Dick Cheney. And he was being asked questions about a whole host of issues. Following 9-11, the, the affairs in various countries of the world. And I listened to him speak and I said, whether you agree with him or disagree with him, this is a man of wisdom and judgment and he could have been president of the United States. That's the kind of person I like to have. Scary? Cheney threw a fundraiser for his favorite candidate, Mitt Romney, raised him a cool six million. Photographers were forbidden to take pictures of them together because most Republicans hate Cheney. Reporters were barred from most of the proceedings, but when the secret ceremonies were over, Cheney gave interviews saying that Romney would be the best guy to have as president during the next 9-11 type attack. In 1977, Romney went to work for Bain and Company as a corporate looter, a pirate. But in 1984, he left Bain to form a new company called... Bain? Wait, what? He left Bain to form a new company in which he was the president, CEO, and the sole stockholder. So it was, in truth, Romney Capital. Bill Bain had nothing to do with it. But they called it Bain Capital. What's up with that? That's a deception, clearly. Romney hid the true nature of what he was starting, but to what purpose? You keep thinking about that one, and please also notice that because he was the president, and the CEO, and the sole stockholder of Bain, he could write checks, sign contracts, sign audits, he could do anything without ever having to explain or tell anyone anything about what went on in this place with the phony name Bain Capital. In setting up this company, he insisted on having the ability to work in complete secrecy. Why? Why did he set up this business like this? What's the point? And now he won't release his tax returns. You've got to know we're on to something here, right? No kidding. But you just wait one minute. While we look at where George H.W. Bush was and what he was doing in 1984... I remember down in Central America, we were refueling planes full of cocaine coming into the U.S. and uh, it was a CIA uh, operation being run by the White House. George Bush Sr. came to Guatemala on January 13, 1986. And he approached me and asked me what I did uh, there at the uh, U.S. Embassy, what my job description was. And I told him I was a DEA agent working uh, uh, international narcotics investigations. And I told him, look, you know, we have gathered intelligence that the cartels are involved in drug trafficking down in El Salvador. And then he just smiled, shook my hand, and, and walked away from me. And it was then and there that I knew that my government knew 
that these atrocities were occurring. In 1984, Bush's cocaine trade is booming, booming so loud that U.S. officials, foreign governments, and journalists are all starting to engage in very dangerous talk about it, for which they will be severely punished, by the way. And at this very moment, Mitt Romney establishes himself as the utterly secretive operative of the fraudulently named Bain Capital. The picture's starting to come together, no? You ain't heard nothing yet. If you Google 173% Romney Panama, you will get this amazing article from the Los Angeles Times. This article shows that Romney's super-secretive Bain Capital paid out an incredible 173% return to his investors every year for 10 years. 173% per year! That's absolutely insane! Bernie Madoff is doing life in prison for trying to pay out a 10.5% return to his investors. Everyone agrees that Madoff was a brilliant investor, but he couldn't manage to pay a measly 10.5% without breaking the law. Romney paid 17 times that. How the hell did he do that? You know he could not possibly have done it legally, which explains all the secrecy. Bain Capital was enmeshed in the largely opaque world of international finance from its very inception. No kidding. All of Bain Capital's operations were completely opaque. Most of the money Romney's investors put into Bain Capital was through corporations set up in Panama with names such as Veloff Trust, Hoya, and Universal Selling Company. In the 1980s, Panama was the country of choice for foreigners wanting to make investments on a confidential basis. Most foreigners' money came through corporations registered in Panama, then known for tax advantages and unusual banking secrecy. Unusual banking secrecy, what does that mean? It means that Panama was then, as it is today, the center of Bush's cocaine money laundering operations. Today, Panama is still identified by the U.S. State Department and the Drug Enforcement Agency as a primary repository and conduit for Colombian and Mexican narco-trafficking cartels. So Romney, from the start, is centered in these operations. And now it's time to meet Harry Strachan. Before he joined Bain, Harry was teaching at a tiny college in this tiny country, Nicaragua, that just happened to be the primary target of CIA operations. He says he was working for USAID, a notorious CIA front. Somehow, teaching at this tiny college in Central America helped qualify Strachan to become an investment banker? Maybe it was the reputation he says he had as a CIA agent that got him the job at Bain. In any case, Strachan left his, let's say, most unusual job in Nicaragua and went to work, he says, helping put Bain in touch with these shady Central Americans. Harry says that Mitt was terrified that this was drug money. But, Harry says, he assured Mitt that these investors were clean and that this wasn't drug money. But if they were clean, Harry, why all the unusual banking secrecy? Why did the money have to move through these shadowy Panamanian filters if it was clean? And since the origins of this money had been hidden by washing it through these Panamanian filters, how could Strachan have known if it was clean? Well, he knew, he says, because he knew the people. They were good, solid, CIA-loving people. That's how he knew. At the time, U.S. officials were publicly accusing some exiles in Miami, especially the ones Romney was dealing with, of funding right-wing death squads in El Salvador. Some family members of the first Bain Capital investors were later linked to groups responsible for killings. Among the Bain investors were Francis R. R. de Sola and his cousin Herbert Arturo de Sola, whose brother Orlando de Sola was suspected by State Department officials of backing the right-wing death squads, according to now declassified documents. As you'll see in a minute, these death squads committed some of the worst atrocities in the history of the world. But they were good people, the kind that Romney would be proud to do business with, secretly. Mm -hmm.